All right, everyone. Before I begin, I'd just like to thank everyone for uh, keeping my level of awesome uh, back to the way it should be. And you can see I have my desktop wallpaper about being awesome. And a big part of the reason why I can maintain my level of stoked and awesomeness is because of the comments you guys made in regards to my most recent video and what happened. So 25 five-star ratings. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that's that's cool. That's great. Thanks. Thank you to all my to everyone out there for doing that for me. I wasn't looking for five star ratings. I was just mentioning that in passing. But hey, that's really cool. Twenty five five star ratings, and actually that got me some honors so far. Because if you look at it, number thirty three top rated in science and technology, and number seven eight most discussed. So really, um, thank you guys. I appreciate it a lot and if you go back to the commentary got some really nice comments about that about my most recent news but um yeah definitely working on some things so um i just like to mention that before i move on to today's topic so today i'm going to talk about um how fast your mac is now there are sometimes people instant message me or private message me and ask me I'm thinking of upgrading from this Mac to this Mac or I'm thinking of going from this PC to this Mac and they ask me well how fast do you think it's gonna be and if I have to be completely honest with you I really don't know most of the time I mean I buy my machine I save my money for it I do my research about it of course and then I buy it and then I'm just happy with it for three or four years or however long I can make the thing last so that's how I am when it comes to me and my computers but when people are in the market, like friends I know or family who are thinking of going to a Mac or upgrading their Mac, one thing that I will always look at for them is um, I'll go to uh, MacWorld.com. So if we come here, if you go to the MacWorld main page, and if you click way on the top here where it says Mac, it'll bring you to the uh, Macintosh hardware guide. And from here, uh, they they are able to just buy the most recent Mac, benchmark it, test it, and it'll give you uh, actually pretty detailed uh, performance scores, uh, just showing you what's available in terms of the hardware. So that's where I get a lot of my information from. And if we come back and look here, this is their actual benchmark re results for the aluminum MacBooks, for instance. Coming down, uh, you see that you have uh, the Speed Mark 5. Now, I have a, a little bit of a dispute with the Speed Mark 5. Speed Mark is actually Macworld's overall performance or overall score for each system that they benchmark. And for instance, you can see that a PowerBook G4 scores a 91, and uh, the newest 2.4 gigahertz MacBook Aluminum scores 212. If you're going to buy a system just based on looking at the Speedmark 5 score, I think that's really missing the point. And overall, I think the Speedmark 5 is kind of meaningless. Because if you look at the baseline, Speedmark 5 scores are relative to that of a 1.5 gigahertz core solo Mac Mini. And that's the whole problem with these uh, Speedmark scores, is the fact that their baseline is a core solo Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini was the only Intel Mac Apple ever produced that was that had a core solo processor and this was an anomaly because at the time um, you had the choice of the 1.5 gigahertz core solo or the 1.66 core dual as I said in my setup video I got the core dual Mac mini and every Mac ever with the exception of this one has been a dual core processor from the MacBook to the MacBook Pro to the iMacs all of them have been core dual processors with the exception of this core solo Mac Mini and this is the one uh, anomaly in the entire Apple product lineup and I, I disputed this and I actually wrote Macro and I said hey making this your baseline is pretty misleading because what that all that does or all that serves to do is just um, inflate the scores of the newer systems as they come out for example a MacBook Core 2 2.4 scores 212 well, of course it's going to score 212 because it's the newest processor and also because it just has a second processor core. 
So, I mean, doubling the processor cores, you're going to get a little bit of a performance boost right there. And I told, and I wrote Macro and I said, hey, you should at least bump it to a core dual Mac Mini or a core 2 dual Mac Mini because no one, hardly anyone out there has the core solo Mac Mini that I can think of. So, once again, if you're going to base your purchasing decision just based on this overall score, you're really wasting your time. And in my opinion, you're not going to be making a fully informed decision. Now, when it comes to, like, when I was considering or looking at Macs or comparing the relative performance between my MacBook, which is right here, this white one, February 2008, compared to the newest 2.4 gigahertz, you, you notice that my MacBook is 190 and the overall score is 212 on the new one. But to me, that's not telling me the whole story. What I actually have to look at is the actual benchmark scores. So in here, for instance, we have Adobe Photoshop 3. My MacBook scores 1 minute and 15 seconds. The new one scores 1, one minute and 5 seconds. To me, that makes sense because the memory architecture was revamped on the new aluminum MacBooks. They used DDR3 memory. The front side bus was increased from 800 megahertz to 1066. New, mar new uh, faster memory architecture as well. So to me that makes sense because Photoshop CS3 is a very memory intensive application and it does make sense that aluminum MacBooks with new DDR3 is going to certainly do better than my MacBook with DDR2. I would hope so, otherwise something's very wrong. So that's why the new MacBook outdoes my, my MacBook here. But really I don't do Photoshop. So when, I, when I'm in the market for a new Mac and I want to ask myself how fast is the new Mac compared to what I'm using now? I, look, I primarily, primarily look at what I use my Mac for. Mostly that's for uh, programming, iTunes, or video compression, and that's it. So to me, the important stuff for me on this chart is looking at things such as my iTunes 7.7. .7. I, you know, decompress or encode my CDs into Apple Lossless, or AAC, for instance. And that this, this, this is a pretty good benchmark. My MacBook is 105, their MacBook is 103 iMovie HD. My MacBook is actually faster than the new aluminum MacBooks for whatever reason. Um, so things such as that. Compressor. Compressor is another thing, like uh, video transcoding. That's something that I do a lot of just because I'm doing these YouTube videos. So 157, 152. So, you know, if you're in the market and if you're just ever curious as to how current or how slow your MacBook is, or if you ever just you know, just go to Macworld, look at their charts, and that's how you can see how fast your MacBook is or the computer you're considering relative to everything else that's out there. And really, you just have to look at what you're going to use your computer for. Now, these are really a little more advanced applications such as iTunes, iMovie, video compression. Video compression is a very heavy-duty thing that you're going to be working with. So the faster the computer, the better as always. But um, if you just need to know how fast your system is, just go with these tables here because really these are the only definitive source or reliable source that I can think of. I understand that there's uh, Geek Labs or Primate Labs, Geek Bench, and there's also XBench. My problem with that is that those are synthetic benchmarks, and those synthetic benchmarks are frivolous to me. I really don't like synthetic benchmarks because, once again, it's going back to this, like the Speedmark 5. This Speedmark 5 is like a synthetic benchmark to me. It doesn't really measure true real-world performance. And that's how I feel the same way about um, Geekbench and X and Xbench. Those are purely synthetic benchmarks, and I think if you're going to use those as, as a measure of performance, you're not really measuring things accurately. So no, those are just my thoughts. Um, and if you ever want to know why things are faster, and I got to do a few videos on to why, such as uh, the Nehalem processor and 64-bit computing, I'm going to be doing some videos like that, hopefully soon. If you ever want to go wide, then just uh, go to uh, Anand Tech, and they have some really excellent articles. And once again, Ars Technica, any articles by John Stokes. He's the best guy out there for understanding why. But if you just need to know how fast or just need to look at some numbers, really 
as far as I know, you just have to go to Macro, look at your tables, and that's what I use. All right, so hopefully that just helps you out. Look at some benchmarks, and there from there you can gauge how fast your Mac is. All right, that's about it. Peace.